Hello and welcome to TIFO IRL. Today we're going to be talking about Benfica's very exciting Uruguayan striker, Darwin Nunes. So you could say that Nunes is the evolutionary apex of the modern striker. Yes. We're going to have a look at what he does well here. So Benfica have used a number of systems so far this season. A lot of the time used a 4-2-3-1, which looks a little bit more like a 4-4-1-1 in European competition. Those big games against Liverpool, for example. Nunes scored six goals in the Champions League. Really impressive return for the 22-year-old. Uh, he also got 26 goals and four assists uh, in Portugal's top flight. A very good return. This is where he's operated in that 4-2-3-1. They do use other systems as well, so we'll talk a little bit about what he can do when he's playing up front with a second striker, uh, and also when he sometimes plays as a left inside forward in a 4-3-3. But this is the kind of predominant thing. Now, what's worth saying with Nunes is that he's a big guy. He's six foot two, he is fast, he's very good at running with the ball, he's a really good progressive carrier. So one of the things that you can do with Nunes is invite this high line like this, and then just thwack a ball over the top. It's not very sexy, but it is very effective when you've got a big physical striker who has the ability with close control, technical ability, to not only keep control of the ball, but hold players off. He then likes to move slightly inside onto his natural right foot and shoot like this. But that obviously, quite basic, that's not what we're gonna look at because that would be a very boring video. So what is Nunes good at? Well. You would think that a striker of his physicality and his bulk would be good in the air, and you would be right. One of the things he loves doing is peeling off, let's get these defenders dropping all the way back here. Rafa Silva, you're making a run up here. Nunes will drift into this kind of left half space channel, and that makes a lot of sense for a right-footed striker, obviously, because he can then turn inside curl shots round, but what it also allows him to do, particularly if players are getting dragged towards this near post, is Nunes will look to peel off round the back and attack the far post when the ball is in the air. That's because he knows that at six foot two, as a strong physical striker, he's going to overmatch the fullback who starts guarding this far post. That means that he's very dangerous from these sorts of crosses in here when he's going up against a shorter, smaller defender. Think Mario Mandzukic at Juventus, that kind of vibe, the wide target man. Uh, but Nunes is a much more complete player than Mandzukic because what he also likes to do a lot is he's very, very adept at making runs in behind. And I think what's really interesting with him is his awareness of where the offside line is his awareness of where defenders are, and his ability to make clever runs in behind that kind of stop, start, stutter a little bit to open up the shooting space. Now, a lot of these will be directed in towards the near post. So let's say that Benfica have recycled possession here like this. These guys closing up a little bit here like this. Nunes is gonna look to make this run in behind here because he knows that Ramos here, who will play as the 10, will open a passing angle like this, or perhaps cut inside and open up a passing angle like that. It's the sort of ball that someone like Lukaku really thrives off and hasn't been getting at Chelsea, and Nunes similarly will use his physicality and his strength and his size to make these runs and ensure that even if the defenders do react, Nunes is physically capable of holding them off he gets into this sort of position, and then he's a very technical and capable finisher. I've got a few grabs to show you that will illustrate this point nicely, not the finishing bit, because it's not video. This is Nunes in this point here. What he's gonna look to do, because there's a run here, uh, there's, sorry, there's a passing angle here that he can make, he's gonna look to make that run inside. Now, what actually happens here is that this uh, player is crowded out and has to recycle possession and then Benfica try to move the ball across this way. Nunes then has adjusted his position, so he's immediately looking around, he's immediately trying to find the next available opportunity to make the run in behind. And here what you can see with this player progressing the ball forwards, there's a passing angle here, there's a passing angle here. Nunes has found himself uh, correctly just behind the offside line and he's gonna look to make that run in behind there, which is great. However, the player who had the ball here, he gets actually blocked by this. So what Nunes does is he stops, he starts, he waits, 
And then as play develops, he finds himself in a very similar position, but he's moved across ever so slightly. Then again, that pass is on there, bisecting these players here. Nunes makes that run in behind, takes the ball in towards the keeper and absolutely thwacks it past him. So what you can see there is that Nunes has this ability to know where the defenders are and to make his runs in behind very, very cleverly. And that's an interesting facet for a player of his physicality. It's a similar thing with Lukaku. This is a guy who, because he looks big, because he's good in the air, because he's physically strong, you expect him to be muscling in against defenders, to be pushing players off the ball, bursting through, stuff like that, which he can do. But he's really mostly about these incredibly smart, well-timed runs in behind. Let's go back to the board and have a quick look at what he does uh, in a couple of other systems. So we have talked about how Nunes can play as a front two, and this is really beneficial for him as well, because what you find when he plays in a front two, let's say it's uh, Seferovic here, who's a really hard-working, pressing kind of forward, Seferovic will naturally occupy defenders like this and what that does is it pushes the defensive line backwards and it allows Nunes to drop off into this space, find the ball, receive the ball on the half turn like this and then make these runs in behind. So he's very effective as front two. He's also very effective as uh, a left inside forward. So let's move Benfica's shape to more of a 3-4-3. So what will happen here is that Nunes is actually occupying this kind of space here. And again, what that does is Nunes will start to pin this fullback and this fullback's going, okay, I know I've got this guy to deal with. He's really difficult. He's gonna make a run in behind. But then Grimaldo advances, stays in a really high position. Suddenly this fullback's conflicted. So either what happens is the center back comes across to help out with Nunes. You get this squeezing across and suddenly Benfica can open up the whole other flank and that's really dangerous. Or the centre back goes, no, 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 I've got to deal, I've got to help my colleague out here with this other centre forward, maybe this guy tucking in here. And then Nunes is able to receive the ball in the left half space in a bit of space and then make these dynamic runs, carrying the ball, opening his body up to be able to curl shots in with his right foot. So this is a player who is super versatile in terms of the different ways that he can play as a striker or as an inside left forward. And for a player of his age, that kind of tactical versatility coupled with his positional intelligence and his movement and his undoubted physical uh, strengths creates a really complete footballer. Uh, and that's obviously why he is such an exciting prospect for Europe's top clubs. We'll have a quick look at his minutes. We can see uh, this season for Benfica, he has mostly played here as a single striker, but he's cropped up a little bit here as a left eyes in, in forward. This is where as the, the, the CAM sort of second striker, he's playing slightly off someone like Seferovic able to drive forwards, able to carry the ball, which is in his skill set. And it leads to a player, look at this pizza chart. So, okay, firstly, let's say you're not getting a massively impressive defensive forward. He does actually recover and intercept the ball pretty well, but the rest of these numbers are low. That is contextualized by the fact that Benfica are a ball dominant team. He doesn't have to do that much defending. You know, he's going to, if he transitions to a team that requires more from him in a pressing game, that'll be fine. But look at this. As a striker, shot volume, exceptional. Receptions in the opposition box. XG from shot creation and ball progression, they are both adjusted for Premier League standard. So that is a seriously high quality player here. Carry and dribble volume, really, really high for a center forward of his type. You know, again, like I say, there are expectations with Nunes because of his height and his strength that he's going to be a particular type of forward, but this is somebody who loves to get the ball to feet, loves to carry it forwards, loves to cut inside or pick up the ball on the turn in a half space or in the space in between the lines, move it towards the opposition goal and then pick an opportunity to pass and maybe get in on the return pass or unleash a shot. So you're getting a lot of link volume here, even if it's not the link up play volume of like back to defender laying it off, this is still somebody who particularly in transition is going to be a really effective forward. 
So we're not going to speculate about where he might go. Loads of clubs have been linked with him. With these kinds of numbers, that kind of game intelligence, it's very easy to understand why. Wherever he ends up, I think it's safe to say that Darwin Nunes will be a, a very good and successful striker, and we'll just have to see where that is. But whoever gets him does need to play balls in behind. Don't look at him as a big guy that you can lump things into up front, because we've seen teams make that mistake with other strikers before. Let's hope it's not replicated with Darwin Nunes. So this has been Darwin Nunes on Tifo RL. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we will be back with lots of other stuff very soon. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalized experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions, and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.